Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to my closet. This monster idea came from a friend of mine, Art with Mrs. E on Instagram, who developed this project about monsters in a closet. Monsters can look any sort of way, so there's really no wrong way to do it. I love these examples with bright colors and crazy designs and a bunch of different items filled in this closet. To get started, you're going to fold your paper like a book. And on the front part, I like to draw these rectangles. And then I draw diagonal lines in the corners. And then draw a smaller rectangle in the center. You should start with pencil first. I'm currently tracing my pencil with Sharpie. You want to do pencil first to make sure you've got it right before you trace it in something permanent like the Sharpie. Once you're finished drawing the front of the door with pencil and Sharpie, then you're going to flip to the other side and draw your entire closet using pencil first. You can see here I've done mine in pencil already, and now I'm going over that pencil with black Sharpie. It's hard to see the pencil on the brown paper, so Sharpie makes it really nice to go over and give it a good dark outline. I've got my monster in the center here. He's kind of wacky holding his eyes up with little antennas and a furry tail and a crazy mouth, but I've also filled my closet. I've got a line towards the bottom of my paper that goes from one side to the other to show where the floor is. And then I also have the hanging rail at the top and all these clothes and other things you'd find in a closet. Hats, piles of shirts, shoes strewn about, a toy box with some stuffed animals and shelves with some games on it. I took my time to add details before I did the Sharpie and now I'm going over everything with Sharpie. Now that I'm done with all the Sharpie tracing, I'm gonna go over the lines with an eraser because I'm guaranteed to have missed some pencil spots and I wanna make sure it looks nice and clean and neat. So take an eraser and erase all the pencil. Now you're ready to color. Normal crayons won't really show up well on the brown paper, but oil pastels work great. Some tips about the oil pastels, be careful that they're oily and they will smudge if your hand rubs on the paper where the oil pastels are. I'll show you a trick in a minute how to prevent that. What is really great about the oil pastels is you can blend and mix. If you see my finished one and admire how I colored it, I guarantee you in the best spots on my paper, I used more than one color. By blending and using a white with a color or similar colors, like you'll see me use blues and greens in the next few minutes, mixing and blending and then taking the color I really wanna show through, which is that green and blending over top, I'm able to create some really cool effects with these oil pastels. If your oil pastels look dirty, you can take a paper towel and twist the oil pastel, almost like you're sharpening it, twisting it inside the paper towel, and that should clean the oil pastel. Make sure you're using dry paper towels. I'm gonna go ahead and continue coloring. Once you begin oil pastels, there is no more outlining with Sharpie. If a Sharpie marker touches any oily oil pastel, it will ruin the marker. Do not outline it with Sharpie once oil pastel has been used on your paper.
You can see I'm starting to run out of room to put my hand that holds the oil pastel so that I don't rub my hand back and forth and get it all messy and smudge my art. So you should take a scratch piece of paper and lay it under your hand anywhere your hand will touch oil pastels. This way I don't get oil pastels all over my hand and I'm also not ru ruining the areas that I've colored. Now it's your turn. It should take you two classes. One class to draw, trace with Sharpie and erase any extra lines, and a second class to focus on coloring. I can't wait to see what you create.